John Kirby, the spokesperson at the Pentagon, Frank McKenzie, uh, Central, Central Command uh, chief there with, with the briefing for us, and remarkable transparency on a, on a dark and difficult day for the United States military. Eleven U.S. Marines and one Navy medic uh, killed in the Afghan attack that happened earlier today. Uh, some of the details there may, may have been confusing. Here's how that gate works. Uh, there's a road that leads directly to the gate, and that road has blast walls on either side, concrete walls on either side. At the beginning of that road is a Taliban checkpoint, a series of them, actually, where the Taliban are supposed to physically screen every human being who then moves forward to the next checkpoint, which is the United States Marines. And then individuals are hand-searched, much as you would be in secondary screening at the airport, as it's been described to me. And it was during one of those hand searches that the suicide bomber at that gate blew himself or herself up. Uh, again, as the general said, they don't know the size of the bomb, or, but w were the Marines close together or was the bomb so big that it spread out over an extended area? They don't have the details on that yet. There was a second explosion of some sort, as he mentioned, at a nearby hotel, which is a headquarters for British troops, but no British troops were killed there or injured, to their knowledge, and a number of Afghan civilians. The count from the hospital is somewhere around 60 Afghan civilians and, uh, and many dozens more injured, especially in that sewage canal that, that rings the area. Of note now, moving forward, the evacuations are continuing. From what the general said, they're bringing them in on buses now to the degree possible. Whether there are actually people walking in and off of the, of the airfield now was not made perfectly clear. But they do expect attacks to continue. We had been getting intelligence from sources suggesting to us that, that there was an active threat stream that was underway now, that they knew of specific kinds of threats that the U.S. military and others there are facing. And he gave us some details of that. He said that they would like to carry out a mortar attack, though he described the, the defenses which are available for that. Very concerned, and we've been hearing this, these from our sources as well, about a car or truck bomb in and around the, the airfield. Remember, to cause havoc, they don't have to get inside. They made that perfectly clear today. So they're very wary of car or truck bombs around that area, and they believe that those attacks of that kind are imminent. He also said that some attacks, they believe, have been stopped. As far as the evacuation mission, he says it will go on undeterred. In fact, uh, the CENTCOM chief and others, the head of the Defense Department, all saying that the evacuation mission will continue. But I did notice one matter in wording where he said this, the evacuation will continue until sometime near the end of the month. Prior to today, it was a hard stop on the 31st of August. And now he's saying some, sometime near the end of the month. If, if that is a distinction with, if that is a, a difference without distinction, uh, that, that remains to be seen. But could this speed up as a result? There's certainly been great speculation about that. 104,000 people have been evacuated so far, 66,000 by the United States, uh, 37,000 by allies and partners, 5,000 Americans are out of there. And importantly, they believe about 1,000 Americans remain to be evacuated from not just Kabul, but the entirety of the country. Think about it. From Kandahar, it's about a 10 and a half hour drive under perfect circumstances. From Mazari Sharif, it's about an eight and a half hour drive under perfect circumstances. These are anything but perfect circumstances. And the overriding question of all of this is the Taliban had guaranteed the United States military and the office of the White House security for the evacuation of our troops. And the president was crystal clear that if the security was breached and Americans were hurt or this operation was upended, that the response would be swift. We have not yet heard from the president now some six hours or approaching it since this happened at about 6.15 p.m. Afghan time. Uh, but what sort of response might the United States have? Can terrorists attack and kill United States military members and not face a return attack? That is the question. The answer will come from the president.